Welcome to Life in Biology, I'm Dr. Joel Graff, and this video we're going to be talking about translation regulation. And there's a lot to translation, but we're just going to focus on the initiation part. Now, why do I say initiation? Well, if we look at the central dogma of biology, we've got DNA being transcribed to RNA, RNA being translated to protein, and these two steps, transcription or translation, is what you need to get taken care of in order to take a, the information of the gene in the genome to having a functional protein. And if we want to break down transcription and translation, we can break it down into steps. And the reason I have the title of this slide as same old story is that for transcription, we can break it down into the steps of initiation, elongation, and termination. In contrast, or not in contrast, we have the steps of translation can be initiation, elongation, and termination. So initiation on both of these is when you have to build up all the proteins on the DNA or the mRNA to get the process started. Elongation is the polymerase moving in a five prime to three prime direction, uh, building the mRNA or it's the ribosome moving along the mRNA in a 5' to 3' direction to build the protein. And finally, termination. Both of these uh, processes require a lot of uh, proteins binding onto the nucleic acid and then finally letting go. So, the bottom here, I'm just going to squeeze in. Not so, my artwork is not great, but I'm going to squeeze in the... Uh, the overview of the different parts of an mRNA. We've gone over this quite a few times, but just to, as a reminder, we have a cap at the very five prime end. There's some sequence called the five prime untranslated region. This is usually anywhere from 10 to 100 bases, uh, nucleotides. Then we've got the open reading frame, ORF, which is the coding sequence. So the beginning of an open reading frame is a start codon, and the end of an open reading frame is a stop codon. And there shouldn't be any stop codons in between uh, because you want to go three nucleotides at a time along that open reading frame to encode for the protein. You have a three prime UTR, and this isn't drawn much to scale because three prime, U three prime UTRs can be very long. Um, let's say anywhere from 300 to 5,000, 6,000 nucleotides long, okay? And then you finish off when you are terminating your transcription, you finish off putting a poly A tail on the mRNA, and that is what you end up with at the far three prime end of an mRNA is a poly A tail. Okay, so let's talk about the initiation process of translation, and this is really important because this is the rate limiting step when you are trying to translate an mRNA into a protein. So we're going to talk about some of the proteins involved, uh, gloss over some of the other proteins involved, or save them for a different video. Here is we've zoomed in on the cap at the 5' prime end of our mRNA. Here's our 5' prime end translated region. And then here's our open reading frame, and it goes on and on, and it would go off my little slide that I have here. At the very five prime end of the open reading frame, we have a, the, the sequence A, U, G. Those three nucleotides of RNA together make a start codon. Uh, and so we would want to start our translation here. But the pileup begins down here. So on the cap, uh, five prime methyl uh, cap, uh, we've got a protein called EIF4E. I left the EIF off. It stands for eukaryotic initiation factor. I only wrote the 4E um, because uh, there's so many of these proteins. We're just going to assume that everything is EIF. Okay, so EIF4E binds to the cap. It's called cap binding protein. Great name. Then we've got 4G, which is a scaffolding protein, and I'll come back to that in a while. But 4G interacts with both 4E and uh, 4A. So we've got yeah, 4A, G, and E, age. That's how I remember it. Anyway, 
this is our beginning dog pile. So what's this good for? Well, this is what you need to happen to recruit the ribosome or begin recruiting some of the ribosome to the mRNA. So our dog pile continues down here. Uh, I've drawn out the mRNA again, and I've drawn uh, something called the 43S uh, pre-initiation complex. It includes the 40S subunit of the ribosome. That's the small subunit of the ribosome in a eukaryotic cell. It has a bunch of proteins in the middle there. If you uh, understand my drawings at this point, that is a tRNA, and I've got a methionine stuck to the, the end of that tRNA. So there's lots of proteins and RNA, and there's an RNA even in that 40S that I didn't draw, and extra EIF this and EIF that. So lots of proteins. The ribosomal subunit is called 40S, but together this is called the 43S. S stands for Svedberg unit, and you don't really need to know that, just know that it has to do with spinning something in a centrifuge and where things line up in that centrifuged tube. Okay, so the pre-initiation complex gets recruited to the five prime end of our mRNA, and then it does a process called scanning. So when an ATP dependent process, it moves along um, and because it's got the initiator methionine tRNA, it can match up with AUG. So it's scanning along and when it gets to that first section of the open reading frame here, and I didn't write the AUG in, but the tRNA matches up with the AUG of the start codon and a lot of these proteins that were involved in the 43S pre-initiation complex leave, the tRNA with the methionine stays in place, the 40S uh, ribosome subunit stays in place, and then the large subunit of the ribosome, which is called the 60S subunit, uh, gets taken in place and the methionine ends up in kind of smack dab in the middle of that 60S ribosome. At that point, you can start uh, reading the next codon, uh, bring in the next tRNA, add on the next amino acid, and the ribosome will move its way in a five prime to three prime direction uh, and build the chain. You can hear my cat uh, in the background. That's Charlie the ore digger again. Maybe my dog Reggie Von Hooby Dooby will be scratching at the door before the end of this. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so I've drawn the mRNA again, but I've drawn it in a circle. So I've titled this slide Roundup. And here we are at the five prime end and we've got our cap. We've got our five prime untranslated region. I've written in start there. I haven't drawn the extra uh, thickness to the line to indicate the open reading frame, but I did draw in the 4E protein, the 4G protein, 4A protein, and then as you work your way around this mRNA and get to the poly A tail, there's a protein called poly A binding protein that will stick to the poly A tail, but it also sticks to 4G. So 4G has different segments in it. Part of it interacts with EIF4E, part of 4G interacts with 4A, part of 4G interacts with poly A binding protein. And because it interacts with those three different pieces, especially, you know, the 4A is maybe not so important for this point, but the 4E and the poly A binding protein, that lets you create a circularized mRNA. So what's the good of that? Well, we're going to recruit in our ribosomes to this 5' prime end of the gene. We're going to do scanning until we get to the start. We've got a 60S and 40S ribosome that we're already on the mRNA. And there's just the hint of an amino acid chain growing there. It moves along, reads additional codons, and there's another ribosome that's already worked itself further ahead on this mRNA, and it has created a slightly longer amino acid chain. Here's a third ribosome that's on our RNA at this point, and its amino acid chain that it's building by reading the mRNA is getting longer and longer. Again, another one, and then this is towards the end of the gene, and at the end of the gene, when you reach that termination codon, the new protein floats off by itself. The 40S and the 60S ribosome subunits will disassemble, and 
to follow these trails. I've got the 40S getting recruited. It's going to get recharged to be the 43S pre-initiation complex again, and it'll be brought in to this EIF 4A, and it'll start that scanning process all over. Once it gets to the start site, the 60S that fell off, the 60S ribosomal subunit that fell off here at the three prime end of the open reading frame will then rejoin with the 40S and you start building the RNA again. And so it's like a little merry-go-round where these are hopping off and hopping back on and uh, getting back in line. So it's like they've, they've, they've been, you know, a bunch of kids at the park, they all going down a slide and as soon as they get done going down the slide, they run around, climb up the ladder and go down the slide again. So that's what we have going on here. One more piece of terminology just to throw in because I can't help myself. Uh, when you have an mRNA that has multiple ribosomes currently working on it, it means that the translation efficiency was high, and we have a special word for the mRNA plus all those ribosomes stuck to it, and that is called a polysome. Poly. Poly means many, zome from uh, short for ribosome. So anyway, initiation, rate limiting step, and uh, lots of things happen to get the initiation started and the circularization of the mRNA is to increase the efficiency and allow the ribosomes to jump back on and make another protein. All right, that was quite a bit for one video. Uh, we'll talk about charging of the pre-initiation complex at another point in time and learn about more EIF proteins. Until then, like and subscribe, or not. Talk to you later.